Today we confer an honorary degree to Michelle S. Jones, retired 9th Command Sergeant Major of the United States Army. As 9th Command Sergeant Major of the Army Reserve, Ms. Jones distinguished, distinguished herself as a woman of many, first culminating as the first woman to serve as the CSM of any of the Army's components, active or reserve. Prior to her retirement, she held the highest non-commissioned officer position of any woman in the Army. She has toured extensively throughout Bosnia, Kosovo, Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, Qatar, and Uzbekistan. She continues to aid in the community through a variety of youth, women, veterans, and homeless veterans organizations that serve in her commitment to share. This isn't in the script, so I hope this is okay to say, but really, Michelle is a badass. Sorry. <laughs> And she's awfully nice as well, as you'll discover. <laughs> Ms. Michelle S. Jones, it is my honor and great pleasure to award you with the degree of Doctor of Public Service. Okay, I'm gonna say this first. Don't make me cry and mess up my false eyelashes, okay? <laughs> so let me keep it real right now. Thank you so very much uh, for that very kind introduction. I especially like the badass part, okay? Um, admittedly, it is rather embarrassing to have what you did and what you love read out loud. So um, not only that, it is a unnerving, it's unnerving, and it raises the expectation for me to say something profound and memorable. So I'm gonna try to do that. Dr. LeBlanc, thank you so very much. Um, thank you for the invitation to be here. Thank you so much for everyone of bestowing upon me an honorary doctorate degree. Oh my gosh, I'm out of control now. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> so here we go. Good afternoon. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to turn around and we're going to start this all over again, okay? So hold on a second. Wait a minute. Thank you. Good afternoon. That's what I'm talking about. And it is a great afternoon. To the graduating class of 2019, congratulations. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm asking you already in advance, to lend me your ear, some willingly, and some of you already counting down how long it's gonna take me. So bear with me. To my fellow veterans, sister and brothers in arms, still serving in my military families, I have to say a special congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. I have to. only have 30 seconds, come on now. No, maybe not 30 seconds. Now I have a test for you. And you thought this testing piece was over, but not quite. So what I need you to do is listen, prepare, and execute. Again, listen, prepare, and execute. So here we go. On the count of three, as loud as you can, I want you to say thank you to everyone in your journey that leads you here today. So again, your test, count of three. Here we go. One, two, four. 
I'm just testing. I'm just testing. They, they deserve their degree, by the way. They listen. So here we go, for real. One, two, three. There you go. Thank you to everyone that has supported them. So here we go. It is indeed a great honor to speak to you today. I struggle with the content of what to speak about, words of meaning, words of substance, words that will motivate and encourage you to move forward, words to serve as a catalyst to propel each and every one of you to take a piece of my message, dissect it, examine it, and determine what you can learn from it and take away. And yes, words that will keep you awake. I don't have a speechwriter. I don't want one. I don't have a person to capture the essence of my feelings, my thoughts, and beliefs, a way to express my passion and commitment to speak from the heart, to tell the truth as I see it, and put it in a way that may not have been the most eloquent, but it is truly the most sincere. So sit back, relax, and know what I'm about to say is truly from the heart. Each graduate before me has an expectation of what this degree means, how it will serve to fulfill professional success and personal achievement. For some, it's a completion of a lifelong goal, goal, and others an example for those that you love. Each expectation is as individual as you are. However, the perspective of what the degree will do for you, how the degree will open doors for you, or how the degree will put you in an upward trajectory depends on who on you and where you are in your life. And let me explain. And I refer to it as the decades of adulthood. The first decade, the 20s. That's the woohoo, I'm 20, woohoo, I'm an adult. Woohoo, I know everything. Woohoo, I'm gonna get that six figure salary based on the fact that I just walked out of college. That's the 20s. The second decade of adulthood, the 30s. That's the, hmm, maybe I didn't know everything that I thought I knew in my 20s, and now I better listen to what those older members in my family advised me to do. I see the head shaking. And then you get the third decade of adulthood. That's the, aha, I got this now or maybe the, uh-oh, maybe I didn't listen in my 30s and 20s. <laughs> maybe I need to do some changing before it's too late. Reevaluate pro uh, priorities, family, et cetera. Maybe I need to get rid of that significant who's not so significant other so I can go back to school. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Woo. I was married once. Okay? Yeah, yes, I was married, but he was not a bum. And everybody in here knows him. His name was Sam, Uncle Sam, okay? Got a great alimony check from him every month. How about that? Anyway, so, and then you have your fourth decade of adulthood. That's the 50s, the nifty 50s, and that's the oh yeah, I know who I am, oh yeah, I'm gonna do what I need to do, oh yeah, the kids are almost gone, oh yeah, I can buy that condo, and oh yeah, I can dance on the beach, whatever I want to do when I want to do it. Nifty 50s, okay? That's it, go ahead and applaud. <laughs> yes. And then you get that fifth decade of adulthood, the 60s. It's like, who cares, I'm done. Okay? And then those last two or three, and I'll say the 70s, because that's where it begins. It's the <laughs> whatever. I'm 70 years old, I'm 80 years old, I can say whatever I want to say, do whatever I want to do, and then they'll say, oh yeah, she's in her 70s or 80, please forgive her. 
I can't wait to get there because there's so many things that I want to say and they're just going to say, she's old, it's okay. <laughs> but you're not there yet, most of you. But there are some here. So where you are in that decade of adulthood will determine how you use your degree, what you want to do with that degree. Each decade is different from individual experiences, responsibilities, flexibility, and risk-taking. The decades of adulthood often determine how people see you in your workspace, how people receive your ideas, and how much they include or exclude you in the workplace. And yes, how much they will respect you when you walk in the door. Your decade of adulthood will establish how you use your degree and the degree and the decade in which you earned, it will define how it can work for you. It's not a guarantee that you will get the job or the next promotion that you may be considered for. What it will guarantee is that you cannot be denied based solely on the fact of not having one. Clear? All right, just want to make sure. It guarantees that you have grown professionally, personally, and is a strong indicator of your commitment and dedication to accomplish what many still don't do or cannot do. The door has opened for you for new opportunities previously closed to you. But don't be consumed by the title on the door. Titles come and go. I've had more than I can shake a stick at. The one that I like the most is Command Sergeant Major Retired. <laughs> the one, oh, you can go ahead and applaud, okay? Thank you. The one that warms my heart is Mommy. But the one that I am most proud of is Veteran. They come and go. Do not, thank you, do not get caught up on the title on the door. Focus on the service you provide, the work ethic you display, the leadership that you exhibit, the teamwork that you foster, and the role you are tasked to perform for those you are responsible for and those who you are responsible to. Lead them in their educational journey as well by supporting a formal education as well as an education in life. So you may ask, how do I do this? And it's my life philosophy, it's my leadership philosophy, and it's what continues me on my journey of others. So here it is, and it's called the Bones Theory. Not the Jones Theory like my last name, but the Bones Theory. And it's quite simple. First, backbone. Having the courage to stand up and be who you are. Having the courage or the backbone to go against the tide when the tide is going the wrong way. Having the backbone or the courage to say, I don't know. Having the courage or the backbone to say, I was wrong and I'm sorry. Second bone, wishbone. Believing and hoping and knowing it's possible. When people said to me, there's never been a woman in that position ever in the army, I'm like, and your point is what? <laughs> Wishbone. Believing and hoping and knowing it's possible. Third bone. Ooh, the third bone is for every person, and I still say it, Haters <laughs> drink in haterade every day. They're caught up in the negativity of I can't do, you can't do, this is the way we always did it. Why do you want to change things? Why do you want to do things? Why do you want to change the status quo? Why do you want to change the wheel? Whatever, whatever else they say. They make you frustrated. They make you angry. Instead of getting mad, instead of getting even, I tell you what you do, go to Walmart or Target, not to shop, go buy some construction paper, a pair of scissors, not to hurt anybody, okay? 
and some tape. Take the construction paper, draw little circles, write their name on that face, put the tape on the back, stick it on the mirror, stand back and say, let me tell you something, you're not gonna stop me from doing what I know I need to do just because you are negative and you wanna talk about sitting around drinking Gatorade every day. And you look at yourself in the mirror while you're doing this and you look absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> but you laugh, you let your frustration out you find another avenue of approach, you go over it, under it, around it, kick it out the way, do what you have to do, but laugh your way to success. And that's the funny bone. <laughs> laugh your way to success. And then the last bone. The last bone. Nothing, I mean absolutely nothing happens if you don't get off your tailbone and do something. You can talk about it all day. But if you don't get up and do something, it will never change or never get better. So, one last test. This is important. So lets me know if I hit my mark. What's the first bone? Second bone. Third bone. Last bone. Give yourselves a round of applause. Okay, so. Last couple of things I wanna share with you. Your degree, yes, it's for you. It's an indication of your tenacity, as it's been said, and your achievement. But anything that comes to you, I always believe, and in my world I say blessing, you ask yourself, what can I do with that for the benefit of someone else? And it's called a legacy. And I believe that your individual accomplishments tells me what you did when you lived. However, the legacy that you leave tells me how you lived your life. And a legacy never dies. So this is my legacy, doll having a bad hair day. Um, I take this with, take her with me wherever I go as a reminder, Michelle, it's not about you. It's about what you can do for someone else. So right here, there's a place where I can put a picture. I know everyone can't see it, or maybe you can, I don't know. But you can put a photo. For me, I don't need to know who I'm helping, just that I am helping someone. So that's my doll, get your own, but remember, it's the legacy that you leave for someone else. And then the last thing, I talked about four bones. Does anyone want to guess which one is my favorite bone? Just say it out loud, anybody up there on the top. What, what? Funny bone, I like that one. Backbone, you got to have that. Okay, tailbone is only one left. Wishbone. But in order to have a wish, what do you have to have? Don't say a bone. A dream. A wand. You gotta have a wand to make a wish. Come on now. The kids probably said it. So this is my wand. It's a very special wand because whatever I wish for you is gonna come back to me because it has a mirror on the back. So my wish for you, celebrate today as an individual. Celebrate today with those that have supported you. Celebrate with your fellow graduates. But after today or a couple of days, and oh, by the way, happy Mother's Day to the moms. It's tomorrow. After a couple days, ask yourself, what can I do with this degree for the betterment of someone else? That's my wish, this is my wand, shh. Shh. Oh wait, there it is. Wishes do come true. Thank you, congratulations. 
to the class of 2019. Thank you.